I'm Joshua Bardwell, and if you haven't been keeping up with some of the things that LaForge has been up to lately, you're going to learn something today. LaForge is constantly releasing new products, new software, new innovations, and if I released a new video every time they did something noteworthy, my channel would kind of be nothing but LaForge videos. Some of you might be okay with that, but it's been a while since I covered a LaForge product, and it's been a little bit too long, actually, so I'm going to recap some of the exciting things that LaForge has done lately. Stay tuned. The first and possibly the most exciting thing that LaForge have done is they've released an app that lets you easily flash the firmware on your modules. So when there's a new firmware update, instead of having to, I don't know, deal with X Loader and Arduino and all that nonsense, you can just go to this app, it'll tell you that there's a new firmware and you can flash it right to your modules. This is also nice because LaForge actually has several different firmwares that you can try. There's the base firmware, of course, the standard one that comes on the modules. There's a firmware that Shea Ivey came up with that lets you play capture the flag with your LaForge modules. And they even have a really cool spectrum analyzer uh, firmware that does, it's a little bit less user friendly in terms of just day-to-day -day use, but it gives you a lot more flexibility. It basically turns your LaForge module into kind of a full featured spectrum analyzer. If you're curious about any of those, you can easily flash them using this app. And, and then if you don't like it, you can just easily flash it back. The other thing this app lets you do, and this is something people have been asking for for a long time, and I would like to point out that for the longest time, LaForge said, no, we're not going to do this. It's, it's custom splash screens. People wanted custom splash screens for their goggles, and LaForge was like, uh-uh, I mean, you bad, you bad was like, uh-uh, nope, sorry, we're not going to do that. It's just not something we're interested in. And I can't help but notice that somebody else started doing it. And then shortly thereafter, LaForge released, or UBAD released this tool to let their customers do it. So I guess a little competition is a good thing. And I guess sometimes China is first, but... Now you can get this app from the LaForge website. You can see the URL up here, laforgefpv.com slash firmware. Uh, it's available right now as a Windows download. There is no Mac app right now, although you can run it, I'm told, under Parallels uh, if you have a Mac. Uh, and I'm not going to make a how-to video on doing this because UBAD has a great video on how to use the configurator. I watched the whole thing in preparation for making this video to try and make sure I was educated. And at the end of the day, if I, there's no need for me to repeat somebody else's great work if there's nothing for me to add to the situation just to get clicks, right? So if you want to learn how to use it, just go ahead and watch UBAD's video. Uh, I do have a couple of little things I want to tell you that you might find interesting about the app. Oh, so here's the app. And one thing about the app is that it does not use an FTDI adapter, which some of you may have laying around. Uh, it uses a thing called a USB ASP adapter, and that is slightly less common than an FTDI adapter. So if you don't already have one of those, you're going to need to get one. And there's a link right here on the LaForge site. Um, and you can see I've got mine right here. And it's got this cable with a 10-pin to 6-pin adapter. And it's, that's going to need to get plugged in right here into this little port. Now, I've got my module out of my goggles. If you've got your module installed in the goggles and you don't want to take it out, you can, I think, get at this with them in the goggles. But the thing is, especially if you've got the 3D printed covers, you're going to need to take that off to get at this. And at that point, you may as well just pull the whole module out. You don't need to have a battery or anything because the USB ASP adapter is going to power the module from the computer. So what I've got is I just, I'm just the kind of guy who happens to have one of these little headers laying around. And if you have something like that, that's what you can use as well. And I'm just going to stick this in here like so. And then I hope that uh, if I just plug it in, I'll be good to go. I'm actually not sure which way this goes in. Let's just try it and hope that it can't be plugged in backwards and fry the whole module. Oh, well, that seems to be correct. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, usually what they'll do when they design this kind of pinout is they'll design it so that if you accidentally plug it in backwards, the ground and the power don't get hooked up wrong and you can't fry the module. Hopefully this one has been done that way and I didn't just get lucky. If you do this yourself, do make sure that you, you pay attention to the pinout. Now let's see, I'm going to go to firmware. My hardware is the main module. 
Let's go to main firmware 2.0. I can enable customization. I can uh, do things like call sign, special. Oh, man, I can pick a custom. Oh, let's do Mr. Steel. Let's do the Mr. Steel splash screen. Yeah, of course, right? <laughs> no, nah, whoever. We can pick whoever we like. Rotor Riot. Oh, quad questions. Yeah, okay. Anyway, you can pick that. Or you can make your own. You can upload your own. Okay, yeah, four. This is a lot easier than doing it from the little, you know, clicky menu. Startup mode, favorites. Startup frequency. I like 5740. Fat Shark 1, baby. Fat Shark Life. Enable quick boot. Nah, enable L band. No, don't enable L band. L band is illegal. I'll, I'll make a video about that another time. Oh, channel order. Let's see. By channel, like by frequency. Diversity mode auto, diversity speed. Oh, yeah, that's a cool feature. We'll talk about that. And let's flash. Now I'm going to be sure not to move my hand and accidentally power the board down during this flash. My hand is starting to cramp up a little bit. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> and version 2.0. See, just that simple. Let's see my splash screen. Let me see my Mr. Steel splash screen. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's dumb, but it makes me happy. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the first thing I want to show you, this app. If you need to change your firmware, update your firmware, etc., this is the way to do it. For those of you who have non-genuine hardware, uh, <laughs> for those of you who are trying to flash your real ACC, I know you're out there because you, you comment and you say, hey, where can I get to hexes so I can flash this to my real ACC? Uh, yeah, I, I can't help but notice that a side effect of this is now the hex files are inside this app and no, you no longer have to download them from the website and that means it's probably going to make it a little hard for those of you out there who are trying to use this on non-legitimate hardware uh, to uh, to do so. So good for good for you bad and bad for you and good for the customers and I guess that's what you bad's intent was here. So the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to just walk you through some of the features that are new in firmware 2.0. Uh, so let me just power this up and I want you to notice when I power this up it says Calibrate RSSI, very quickly said that. And that's reminding you that every time you update the firmware, the calibration values, the, the diversity calibration is erased. So you need to rerun the calibration every time. So I'm gonna run to the setup menu here. Oh, nope, that's the raw, I'll show you that in a minute. Setup menu here and go calibrate RSSI. And I need to have a video transmitter powered on in order to complete the calibration. Now I don't have that right now, I'm not gonna get up and do that, but that's what I would need to do to run, to run the calibration. I also want to show you in the setup menu that the diversity speed is now changeable. So the aggressiveness of the diversity algorithm can be adjusted. An example of when you might want to use this is if you're in an area where your omni antenna can basically handle everything, like you're in an open field, you're at a race, you're not very far off, uh, something like that, then you might want to set your diversity switching speed to slow. And that will mean that the module will not switch as often and that'll, you'll get fewer of those little, occasionally when you get a diversity switch, you'll get a little bit of a sync loss. Whereas if you're in an environment like you're flying freestyle and you're flying behind some trees or behind a barn, and you know that when you go back there, you're going to need to roam onto your directional antenna. But then as soon as you come out from behind the barn, you want to roam back onto your Omni. Well, then you might set the diversity switching speed to be a little faster. And you can actually watch down at the bottom of the screen and see exactly what it's doing in any given situation and how aggressively it's switching. The default is, I believe it's fast, and I'm just going to leave it at the default for now. So this is something you can adjust if you feel like it is not aggressive enough in its diversity switching or too aggressive in its diversity switching. Now here we're looking at the band scanner. The band scanner has been upgraded a little bit. It's got a little bit of a graphical upgrade. It's also got some more information showing you the, the rising and the falling channel, the frequency at which the signal is getting stronger and getting weaker. I believe that's what those icons are showing. I'm not 100% sure about that. And I can also use the up and down arrows to scroll through. And you'll notice that as I do that, I'm going to a specific channel and I can see the RSSI on that specific channel. So if I wanna, for example, examine the noise floor in an environment, or if I've got a transmitter and I wanna see how strong the transmitter is or what channel the transmitter is strongest on, this is a great way to do that.
Those aren't all the new features in V2.0, but again, LaForge has a fantastic video demonstrating these features, and I don't want to, uh, they've done such a good job, I don't know, there's no reason for me to just repeat the work they've already done, and so I'll give you a link to that video down in the video description. The final thing that I want to show you is the LaForge Spectrum Analyzer firmware. As I said earlier, this is a firmware that's specialized for people who want to do more spectrum analysis things. Uh, it's not quite as user-friendly. For example, the favorite channel set is missing. Uh, but it gives you a lot more granular control and a lot more information about what's going on in the air. So, for example, if I go to the band scanner... Here is a band scanner that shows the, uh, the strength on each of the channels, so you can get a quick picture of the whole band. But the real magic here is in the RF analyzer, where it's almost acting like a proper spectrum analyzer, showing me peaks and allowing me to step through the channels to find the one that is the strongest or to get on whatever channel I want. I can also, in the setup, have, ex have access to some more advanced options. Again, these will be familiar to people who've used real full-fledged spectrum analyzers. For example, the number of samples per bin, uh, which is sort of has to do with the averaging that's in the, in the uh, spectrum analyzer display. The step size, when I'm stepping through, I can step in 1 megahertz, 2 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 4, 5 megahertz options all the way up to what is it? I'm just going to mech out as 15 all the way down to one megahertz so I can choose if you've got a, uh, a transmitter that is slightly off its frequency maybe it's supposed to be on 5740 but it's just not tuned quite right and it's actually on 5742 well you could tune in to exactly the frequency that you wanted uh, I can also change the units to, from db uh, to dbm is the one I like to see as a as an RF professional dbm is the one that's most useful to me Negative 92 dBm is my noise floor. Oh, isn't that interesting? And that is what LaForge has been up to since the last time I covered one of their modules. But frankly, if you are a LaForge owner, you already knew about this stuff. And I guess this video isn't really for you guys. Uh, this video is really for people who are not already LaForge owners who might be interested in seeing what LaForge is doing uh, and maybe sway them and you know, help them make a decision as to whether LaForge is the module that they want to get. I'm excited to see many manufacturers coming out with these apps to help configure and update the firmware and otherwise manage their devices and it's no surprise that UBAD is is leading the pack here okay well I'm gushing a little bit uh, I don't mean to sound like that but there you go uh, UBAD's doing a good job and uh, I'm glad to be able to share what they're doing with you as always thanks for watching and happy flying